T-minus two minutes and counting, tank pressurization underway on the Saturn C3X launch vehicle which will bear the Scotty module extension to Titan Station. T-minus one minute and 45 seconds. Information released prior to this launch said that the Eagle-T's fission reactor in the payload would use thorium but we are now told that someone forgot to swap out the original factory fuel and left the uranium inside so this is now a uranium reactor going into orbit uh, T minus 1 minute and 25 seconds uh, so if the EDB was looking to confuse anti-nuclear protesters by using an unfamiliar fuel that's out the window and uh, so is some of the confidence that the EDB was on top of things in terms of its uh, nuclear experimentation uh, we still, of course, hope that everything will go well for this launch as we approach T minus one minute and counting. Right now, the nuclear reactor is uh, cold, it is not active right now, and once it reaches orbit and is activated on EVA by the Kerbals, it will take a few days to warm up to its uh, full charge. The antimatter containment unit on the payload is also inactive and unpowered. Uh, most notably completely empty and uh, here we are approaching T minus 30 seconds and counting T minus 20 T minus 15 14 13 12 11 10 9 8 Seven, six, five, four, main engine ignition, and liftoff. We have liftoff of the Saturn C3X for Titan Station. The rocket has cleared the tower. There is, of course, an unusual tension here in mission control as we see the Saturn C3X make its pre programmed roll off of the launch pad. Thirty seconds in, we are at 1,200 meters, 87 meters per second in surface velocity. Trajectory looks good so far. Control looks good. T plus 45 seconds, 3,280 meters in altitude, 171 meters per second in surface velocity. Uh, trajectory still looking nominal. Sixty five seconds in, seven thousand four hundred and forty kilometers, three hundred meters per second. The vehicle is now supersonic. One point three kilometers downrange. The Saturn C three X is now feet wet, it's over the Atlantic, and uh, we are approaching the one and a half minute point in this launch. One minute and thirty seconds. 17 kilometers in altitude, 571 meters per second in speed, 6 kilometers down range, and all still looks nominal. One minute 50 seconds into the flight, 31 kilometers in altitude, 938 meters per second, 16 kilometers down range. We are now aboard to orbit. We are no longer aboard to ocean. In the original plan, the pressure vessel around the reactor would have been able to keep it safe through terminal velocity impact in the case of a failure of the first stage, but we are now past that point. It would be too hot on re-entry to be able to, to deal with that as we see first stage out. First stage separation. And the second stage is lit. A bit of a deviation from the flight path as the second stage takes over and attempts to correct the path. As we are now 75 kilometers, 1,542 meters per second, and 70 kilometers downrange. There is no camera on the payload itself. 
Obviously, it seemed redundant to add a camera to what is essentially just a nuclear reactor and an antimatter containment device. We have fairing separation. Fairing separation is good, the fairings are clear. Vehicle is now 100 kilometers in altitude, 1,765 meters per second, 119 kilometers downrange. Second stage looks nominal. Trajectory looks good. Three minutes, 35 seconds, and we are 117 kilometers in altitude, 2,007 meters per second, and 167 kilometers downrange. So the initial plan was to have an abort to ocean in the case of uh, failure of the first stage, in which case the pressure vessel, which is a quite strong structure meant to contain the nuclear reaction, uh, would have been able to keep it cool and also safe on impact. But we are now past that point, we are now aboard to orbit. The Saturn C3X has about 2,400 meters per second of delta V to spare for the abort to orbit, but it was necessary to get it to a sufficient altitude so that its thrust to weight ratio would not be too low. And we are now 155 kilometers in altitude, 2,700 meters per second, and 308 kilometers downrange. Even in the case of uh, the nuclear material getting into the ocean, of course, because it is subcritical and currently not undergoing a fission re chain reaction, uh, the environmental impact would be trivial. However, after the Fukushima accident, there has been renewed distrust and scrutiny of anything nuclear, and so uh, we are glad to see that this launch is so far going according to plan. The payload itself has small thrusters and about 500 meters per second of delta V in the form of MHN204 fuel and uh, can therefore increase its orbit if necessary and make the orbital adjustments to rendezvous with Titan Station. In addition to those thrusters, there are also solid rocket boosters on the payload that can pull it away from Titan Station in the case of emergencies. There are four such boosters on the antimatter containment unit and another four on the on the reactor unit and so the antimatter containment unit can be pulled away separately uh, making use of its low mass in order to get away faster and of course in the case of a failure of antimatter containment that would be quite necessary uh, but the entire uh, module can be pulled away from the station quite quickly in the case of an emergency and we are now 6 minutes and 15 seconds into the launch and 210 kilometers uh, in altitude, 4,860 meters per second in speed, and 724 kilometers downrange. And that is the second stage out. Waiting third stage, second stage separation, and that third stage is lit. We have third stage ignition and the the stage looks good. 224 kilometers in altitude, 5,500 meters per second, 879 kilometers downrange. Even with all the safeguards, this is a fairly risky endeavor. And in the case of a loss of antimatter containment, there's no telling how slow or fast a reaction could take place, and of course any reaction involving antimatter is quite explosive. The, the nuclear reactor is actually the safer portion of the payload. Uh, at least uh, it would take quite a while to reach any sort of meltdown state. And hopefully the Kerbals will be able to react in time for that. But the critical portion is to maintain containment over any antimatter that is produced. And I'm sure the Kerbals will get all the support they need to ensure that it all remains quite safe. As we see the 7RL10 
Engines on the third stage of the Saturn C3X rocket doing their job, boosting the Scotty module extension into orbit. The Scotty module extension uh, had a mass of 22 tons, and that was why it was not possible to use the Saturn 9 rocket, which was viewed as more reliable. However, the EDB points out that uh, while the Saturn 9 has uh, a more solid track record and is more finely designed, uh, it does have the drawback of only having one engine on each of its stages, and therefore the Saturn C3X was deemed a preferable choice because in the case of a single engine failure on the second or third stage, it would be able to continue to orbit. Uh, failure on the first stage would not have a lot for that. However, in that case, it was uh, considered prudent to go for the abort to ocean. Eight minutes and 55 seconds into the launch, we are at 251 kilometers in altitude, 6,046 meters per second in velocity, and 1,646 kilometers downrange. The rocket is looking good for its, for its orbital injection. Following this launch, of course, we will have the docking of the module to the station, and that's expected to happen either late today or early tomorrow. The EVA to activate the reactor is scheduled for either Friday or Saturday, depending how long it takes to check all the systems out and make sure that the reactor is safe to go operational. And then following that, of course, uh, the Kerbals will begin antimatter production once the reactor has gotten up to a sufficient capacity. We are 10 minutes into the launch and all systems look good. The rocket is now, now simply thrusting for orbit at a zero degree pitch. At this point, the payload's own engines would be able to bring it into orbit should the third stage fail. Simply waiting for third stage cutout here as, as we approach the 11 minute mark. And there it is, we have cut out of the third stage. The orbit is reading 281 kilometers by 185 kilometers, 7,333 meters per second, 3,106 kilometers downrange. And this is good for Titan Station Rendezvous as we see the reactor unit extend its radiator panels. Uh, even though it is currently cool, it is safer to extend the panels to radiate the heat. We will also see that the lights turn off. The lights on the reactor itself, the, the N1 large Omni lights from Tetragon projects, uh, show the status of the reactor, uh, whether it is uh, safe or whether there are any alarms. If those lights go red, uh, that will be a problem. The other Illuminator Mark II lights simply are meant to indicate that this is the reactor end of the station and uh, don't serve any other function. As uh, we've lost uh, simulation data, ah, and uh, it is because the, the module has turned off its lights and that is because currently it is in power saving mode and so we temporarily lost data while it was switching into that mode. And uh, without this mode, it would have one day of power with all the lights on and all of its, all of its systems at full power. Uh, but right now, it is in coasting mode and will have four days worth of power, which should be more than enough for its rendezvous with Titan Station. 
And so thank you for watching this presentation of the launch of the Scotty module extension aboard the Saturn C3X rocket and we hope you will join us for the further missions, uh, the docking and the EVA uh, later this week. And with that, this is the EDB signing off.